For our framework, we're going to employ a software design pattern called the Front Controller. Now, don't be intimidated by the technical sounding name because in reality, a Front Controller in PHP is simply a solitary script which handles all of the web requests for that application. Every single request which your application receives is first directed to this script. And all PHP frameworks implement this pattern for the following reasons. Centralized control. Because the front controller handles all requests, it's very easy to enforce application-wide policies such as user tracking and security. System maintainability. A single entry point system like the front controller means that duplicate code is easily avoided. Configurability. As only one front controller is employed in a web application, the application config is greatly simplified. So here I have a brand new empty project. I say it's empty, I do have one file in there actually, and that is just a git ignore file. I am using git, but it's entirely up to you if you wanna use git. Uh, the git ignore file just contains one entry and that is this one here. And it's just to prevent any uh, things which the IDE that I'm using, PHP Storm, from entering the repository. Okay, so let's make a start here. You're gonna be really disappointed when I show you this because a front controller, like I say, despite the really technical sounding name, actually all it comprises of is just a single index.php script. So let's go and create that now. First, I'm going to create a public folder. So the public folder, this is going to be the only publicly accessible files which can be accessed from a client on the web. All my other files are gonna live outside of this folder. So public, and then inside of here, we're just gonna create a PHP file called index.php. And then here, I'm just gonna sketch out some of the steps uh, that this script will take. So our application will receive a HTTP request and then what we'll do is perform some logic and then we're gonna send back a HTTP response and what that is in reality, it will just be a string of content. That's basically how this works. If you send back HTML from PHP application, you're just sending back a string of content. And the same if it's like a JSON request, you're just sending back a string of JSON content. Start off with here, we're gonna keep life really simple and we're just gonna echo hello world. And I'm gonna show you two different ways uh, that we can spin up a web server so we can use PHP's built-in server if you just want to keep life simple and you have PHP installed on your machine and so the way that we can do that is just by doing this PHP hyphen uppercase s uh, local host and then call on a port number choose any port number you want and then we also need to give it the target file the front control file if I hit enter there Okay, and then I can go and visit that. And so here's our web page, as you can see, hello world. So that's one way of doing it. If you just want to do that, that'll be perfectly fine. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm actually going to use Docker. So I'll show you how we can do that as well. And I'll also provide you with a Docker compose file. And so your setup will be really easy. It'll be just a case of running a command and you'll have the exact same setup as me. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop this and then in uh, the root of my project, so the very top level, I'm just going to create a file called docker compose. So docker hyphen compose dot yaml. And in there, I'm going to paste in some very simple configuration. Now, I'm not going to go through this line by line uh, because I do actually have a docker course on garyclark.tech and it's free so you can enroll in that if you want to know more about docker but i'll just explain what the two entries are here so we have two services one of them is our web service so this is basically an nginx proxy server and then we have app and so this will be our php application and they use images which i created uh, that are perfect for this kind of simple application that we're going to work on here the other thing that I should mention are the volume mounting. So here we're basically uh, performing a volume mounting. So the files in our public folder that you see here will get mounted into this location on the server. And the same with app. So everything in this uh, top level folder here will get mounted to this location on the server. Here's the command you need, docker compose up hyphen D for run in detached mode, which means we'll get the terminal handed back to us. 
And what I'll say about this is you will need to have Docker Desktop installed and you will need to have Docker Desktop running, otherwise obviously it won't work. So if you want to know how to get that installed and running, just go and check out the first couple of videos of my uh, Docker course and it'll show you how to get up and running with that. Okay, let's hit go on this. So what it'll do is it'll spin up the framework, it'll create the two containers, our app container and our web container. And what this means is we should now be able to go and just visit localhost. So we don't need the port on the end there now, although you could put 80 because it's using port 80. Hit enter. And again, same result. So it's still um, sending back the same content, hello world. And the configuration which I created for our Nginx server here is configured for requests to just enter uh, the public folder and to hit that index.php file. So it's set up perfectly for what we need. Let's go back and have a quick look at this before we move on. So we created a public folder in there. We created an index.php file and this is going to act as our front controller, i.e. it's a single entry point into our application where we will receive the request perform that logic and send back a response. So there are not multiple different PHP files that people can hit in a web browser. You go straight to this file. And I've actually set up my Nginx configuration so that you won't be able to go and specify which PHP file you are looking for. And that is why we get this 404 not found that you see here. And none of our other PHP files will live in this public folder. They'll all live outside of it, which means that there'll be absolutely no way that you can just try and access our other PHP files from the outside world. 